Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, part 3, I will discuss some further details about how I do the skin tones, mainly focusing on the hair and then explaining how I finish a portrait. Be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. This is where we left it in part two. So what I'm doing now is just going through the skin tone again for you. So first of all, I do an underdrawing. And basically what I'm doing here is recorrecting the drawing, just placing in the white as a preparation for laying the richer colors on, on the next stage. I'm putting more pressure on the pencil when there's highlights and less pressure where it's mid-tone. So basically I'm just covering the board, just filling in that tooth a little bit, not too much, but just getting some idea of where things lie. Then what I do then is go over this with a warm red and then a yellow ochre, where the warmer tones are. And basically just mixing it in using my finger to smudge uh, but just laying in more pigment where the highlighted areas are and just basically moving the pencil like in sort of circle motions um, all sorts of texture because all this will actually shine through when you start putting the rich colors on so you just lay in this texture and creating each layer as its own value um, as regards to the texture of it so I'm just building it up slowly but surely. Here's some Karen Dash colours I'll be using for the skin tones. And here's some other pencils I've used for the top and also with the skin as well so you'll see me as I go along now what I'm using. So the idea now with the next stage, which is the rich colour stage as I call it, is to try and create a more of an accurate value and also look at the chroma to, because as to, to get realism it's not just the values you need to get correct but also the chroma, the way it glows. That's why I'm using these Karen Dash colours as well and the pre-mixed colours, the flesh colour tints uh, but what that really does, it gives that sort of richness to it because they're very high in pigment and the, the actual colour stands out. Now to desaturate it or to make a shadow, I'm using green and red together which is complementary. So basically this is just a quick recap of what I've done in part Two. So if you want to know more detail of how I do flesh colours, just check out part two before this video. But I just want to rush through this because mainly this video is going to be about the hair. You'll find using Karen Dash pencils it can look a bit scratchy. So I tend to use the Carbothello a lot to sort of blend it out, the, color, the Carbothello white and then just keep glazing over the top on it. So what I'd basically do is put white down, glaze, white down, glaze until I get the texture and the smoothness I want. But sometimes I use the actual colour of the paper, which is dark grey, which shines through these different layers and creates a very subtle desaturated colour. So I use that as well. So I'm not only am I just putting the pigment down, but I'm using the paper colour and laying that shine through in areas um, or, bl or less blended in certain areas and it creates a nice sort of texture to it and feeling. So just rushing through like I say with this um, but at the end of the video just check out that part two if you want to know more about the skin tones. Whenever I use black, I tend to use a different colour with it, just to create more depth. Now this colour could be blue, red, whatever colour. It's best to just experiment and see what works best. 
uh, with this uh, top I used dark ultramarine which seemed to work pretty well right now onto the hair now what can be awkward with hair is is actually making it look real where the hair meets the skin tone so those very fine hairs and subtleties I tend to use a dark green and red because the reason being marking these strands with a dark green I could e easily change that into a skin tone again by adding a little bit of red to it and white this combination seems to create a natural look to it rather than using brown and white um, I've, I've just noticed that it, it seems better just to use the dark green and red so that's what method I've adopted over the years so I'm mapping it out now using the white and the green just getting the idea of where things go I'm not too worried again this is the underdrawing so I'm not too worried about the values or the colour all this underdrawing is is to get the position correct of where each strand is now the best way I've found to approach the hair is to see shapes don't name it as hair because the mind would want to name it because the, the mind is trying to control all the time so let go of the mind open the heart and just allow these shapes to just appear the more you let go the more you open up the more you'll see it squint your eyes as well that will help just to block it out but just feel your way through and just keep relaxed so just grab the white and just try and find the actual direction if you hold your pencil really quite away from the tip as well it'll create a very loose mark it'll, it'll stop you from getting tight and it helps to keep open as well because the more you can keep loose and open the more it will flow from you if you grab the pencil too close to the point and try and draw every little mark you'll get uptight and your mind will kick in then and that will cause tension so it's a great tip just to hold the pencil quite away from the point you notice on the underdrawings I'm always doing this it just creates more flow and more relaxation to the work going in now with the brown so what I'm mixing with the brown <clears throat> at this point I'm just experimenting um, but I'm using a bit of black to get that density but this is still on underdrawing so I'm not too fussed about trying to get the colour correct it's just get some idea of where these shapes are but it does help to, to make it a little bit darker uh, but it's no, no way near dark enough that will be on the rich colour you'll see me putting more darker intense colors in later now I'm using brown and white now and a bit of yellow ochre and also a bit of green just to mix in with it but mainly just mapping it out with the white but decided to put that background in as well now I've changed the background from the last video a request from the daughter of Alison my great niece she preferred a, a blue grey so I've just changed it to uh, suit a decor more now I'm using a couple of Caran d'Ache colours for the background dark, a grey, a light blue and then I mix in then a bit of Rembrandt white just to get a little bit of a glow around the head and then a little bit of Elysian Crimson of Comte of Paris and just mixed all that in just decided to do one side of the face to start with because it's easier for me to actually uh, balance me hand on there because I'm using a little finger just for a place on the clear side of the board there so that helps me to actually um, balance my hand when I'm drawing so I'm leaving that blank for now but just doing one half to start with just getting all the shapes right and getting the feel for it before I go in there with the rich colours now for the real dark areas there I'm using brown black and a bit of red a cold red and really is at that depth to it 
Now here's the colours I'll be using now for the rich colours. It's just pressing on more and putting more pigment down now. And still glazing so that what work you've done underneath shines through as a guideline. But then just putting that finesse over it and tightening the details up. I to always work on one area just to see what's needed to be done throughout the hair. So I'm just working it through the different stages. So I'm putting the blocking of the rich colours and then I'm starting to play about with the details and I'll see what works with that so I get to know what I need to do in preparation for the detail then so just trying to suss it all out because each painting is different each colour hair is different and it needs a different approach so I'm just finding my way through and just enjoy it and once I've sussed out what's needed to be done and what colours I need to mix to create the effect I'm looking for then I can continue with the rest of it. If you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. I find it's always um, more relaxing just to be spontaneous and just allow the marks just to appear um, because the more you can, you know, you try and work something out, the more ta taxful it is and there's more tension it creates. But if you just let it happen, it's hard to put in words what I mean, but it's more you can sort of see the whole thing rather than the detail and feel the energy in it because even in the hair there's energy that's flowing through it so if you sense that and open up to that and just let these marks just happen you'll find that you'll just pick up pencils what you need to without even thinking about it now i'm using black with bits of brown and red and blues all mixed together into the depth of the shadows there and creating the chroma around it as well so it's a it's a balance between the chroma which things that really shine out and also the depth of the really dark values you can get the darks correct and the chroma right then everything else in between just falls into place just want to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons. I really appreciate your support. It means so much to me because it helps me to continue with this free content on YouTube. If you're considering joining me on Patreon and want to have the benefits of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below where you can find more details. With the background I'm just using those Karen Dash pencils doing small circles just keep working on it layer after layer and then using your fingers to blend it in and then I use a bit of Rembrandt stick just around the edge of the head just to create a little bit of a glow there if you find it a bit overbearing you know all the strands of hair and it sort of freaks you out you think oh my god I'm gonna do all this the best thing and the best approach I find is just have a break just go away sit in a room just be quiet quiet the mind down open the heart come back fresh but just see it as shapes movement flowing don't name it as hair because once you start to give it a name that's when you start to get tense because you see it you see too much detail you think am i going to do all that detail but if you don't look at it as detail just look at it as stages just blocking in putting the colors in and then slowly but surely it builds up into what you're wanting to achieve If you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it will mean so much to me because this will help the channel to grow
Now for the wisps of hair, I'm just using some burnt sienna, burnt umber. Over the actual dark green and red I used earlier as a block in, but now I'm putting the sort of richer colours over the top. Just applying it very lightly to start with and just feel your way. Um, but you don't want it too sharp, it needs to be quite blurred and a quite sort of spontaneous because if you have it too sharp in details your eye is drawn to detail you see so so the best approach is to keep everything loose especially around the hair and then all the details in the eyes then so like I say the the viewers eye are drawn to detail so if you put all your detail where you want them to see that will guide the, their eyes to that point Now I really did this all loose and how I did that was just sort of squinting the eyes and just flowing with it and just letting random marks. I didn't quite get it exactly what the reference image is because I wasn't, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to create more swirls in different areas to guide the eyes as well. So I placed a little bit more detail here and there and changed the colours here and there so it draws the eye up. Um, so sometimes it's, it's worth playing about with different shapes to the hair that could create more balance to the face so I changed it up a little bit placed it a bit lighter here and there put a bit more shimmery to it just to create a bit more interest in that area because on the reference image it looked a bit flat when it comes to the final detail stage I tend to look in the mirror a lot and then just see what needs to be done regarding what areas need to be more chroma, what needs to be more subtler, um, fresher, and then just go randomly around the face. Go to where, where your instincts are drawn to and then just keep playing with it to try and get the balance because now the hair's in and you've got that depth of shadow things of it will change the look of the face things look flatter that needs a bit more sort of lifting up in areas now i'm leaning on a bob stick what i use for when i do my oil paintings it's a really handy bit of kit really if you, especially if you're standing up obviously when you're drawing uh, rather than just placing a piece of sheet of paper or glassine paper there it covers it up but when you use a bob stick you're aware of everything so it helps with the balance because you're still seeing everything thanks for watching the video right till the end painting Alison's portrait has been quite emotional for me to create she was so full of joy and it's been so lovely to connect to her energy whilst I've been painting